In this series, we are exploring the role of the women of the Ahl al-Bayt after Ashura. How did they continue to lead the campaign against injustice and tyranny and how they suffered throughout this tragedy and what lessons we can learn from their struggle. In this episode, we will look at the role of another lady, Rabab bint Imra al-Qais and her daughter Sukaina. Lady Rabab was the wife of Imam Hussein and she was one of the ladies who survived and returned to Medina. She was the mother of baby Ali Azhar and a young little girl called Sukaina. Lady Rabab is known for her eloquence and knowledge. Some of the historians say that the narration suggests that she was of the most intellectual woman of her time. So Al Rabab was a very respected woman, was a very respected lady. She loved Imam Al Hussein so much, and she respected Imam Al Hussein, her husband, so much. And she had this bond with Imam Al Hussein to an extent that she lived ill and sick after the incident of Ashura and she did not stay more than a year after that. The journey to Karbala for Lady Rabab was not easy. She was traveling with Ali Azhar, who was at the time just one month old, when they left Medina and Sukaina was also very young. And the other mother that I want to really shed a little light on is the mother of Ali Asghar. Abdullah. This one is difficult. It's difficult for me because of the events that happened. I know the end. And it's difficult for me because it was difficult for Imam Hussein. Indeed, the day of Ashura was also a real test for her. On one side, she faced the fear of losing a loving husband who had been left alone after his companions had been brutally killed. And on the other side, she faced the heartbreaking sight of her little girl being extremely thirsty and in sorrow over losing her uncle Abbas. Then there was also her baby boy who showed his dry tongue to her as a desperate sign that he is dying of thirst. This helplessness was unbearable for Lady Rubab to see in her loved ones. After everyone, all those who came to protect Imam Hussein, have become Shaheed. And Imam Hussein is ready to go to the battlefield. We find the love of a mother. A mother who says, I'm willing to do almost anything to make sure that my son or my child can survive. This mother says to Imam Hussein, whatever you have to do, go get water for our baby. Yazid's forces had decided that no matter what, they would not allow Imam Hussein and his companions to retrieve water from the river Euphrates. So it left Lady Rabab with no option but to bring Ali Azhar to the battlefield. So she said to Imam Hussein, take this baby out. See if there's any type of mercy. Maybe they will give the baby something to drink. It is nothing more devastating for a mother to, ca to carry her child for nine months and to go through the difficulties of labor to see a beautiful child, a beautiful child whose father is the grandson of Rasulullah being born to this world, who could have a future that is none, that is like none of his, um, you know, his age or his other um, children at his time. 
And yet, in a matter of few months, in a matter of only few months, that she would lose him in a sudden way, in a horrific way, in a violent way, without him committing any sins or without him committing any mistakes. There's nothing more horrific um, than that for a mother to go through. Yazid's army set new standards of barbarism on that day after killing this innocent baby. Yazid's corrupt practices were sabotaging everything that Islam had brought. For instance, Prophet Muhammad categorically mentioned and instructed his army that it is the responsibility of every soldier to protect and not hurt women and children during any war. The Holy Prophet even instructed that prisoners of war should not be humiliated. But when we look at Karbala, the Umayyad leader Yazid ibn Mavia ibn Abu Sufyan did not only disobey the instructions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, but he set new precedents for brutality which is not even found in the age of ignorance. Despite all of this, if we think and put ourselves in the shoes of this mother, we may feel what kind of trauma she had been through. इस यानी खाली पढ़ देना और सुन लेना बड़ा आसान होता है एक माँ का दिल रखते हुए ये सोचना कि इसके बाद भी इंसान का जहन व दिमाग बाकी रहे और सही काम करता रहे और ऐसे मौके पर कोई ऐसा हर्फ जबान पर ना आने पाए जो मकसद सरकार सैदुलशहदा के ख़िलाफ़ चला जाए कोई मासूम तो नहीं थी कोई किसी नबी के घर तो पली हुई नहीं थी किसी मासूम के घर में भी पली हुई नहीं थी बाहर से आने वाली और बच्चे के इस आलम में शहादत का देखना किरदार को समझने के लिए यही काफ़ी होता है सच व मिजरीज ऑफ लेडी रोबाब वन शी खेम टू खरबला शी हैड हजबेंड एंड ब्यूटिफुल चिल्ड्रन बट वन शी लेफ्ट शी वॉज ऑल अलोन चलने लगे तो आखिरी मरहल में जनाब जैनब ने जब देखा कि सब सवार हो गए हैं सबको सवार कर लिया है तो एक मरतब जैसे मुड़ करके देखा कि सब आ तो गए हैं लेकिन जिस वक्त देखा है तो ये देखा कि नहीं कोई खातून जो है कब्र इमाम हुसैन पर लिपटी हुई हैं और ये ये जनाब रबाब थी आप करीब गई हैं ये एक ऐसा मौका होता है हसासियत का होता है कि जिस हसासियत के मौके पर जो है आदमी कैसे कहे ये तो अली की बेटी जनाब जैनब थी कोने ने कहा रबा अब तो चलने का वक्त हो गया है तो उस वक्त के लिए जुमले दो तीन मिलते हैं कि आपने ये बात कही थी कि शहजादी आप जा सकती हैं इसलिए कि एक औरत की ज़िंदगी जो है शोहर से होती है तो बच्चों से होती है आपके शोहर मौजूद हैं आपके कुछ बच्चे भी वहाँ मदीने में मौजूद हैं मैं कहाँ जाऊँ किसके लिए जाऊँ औलाद एक यही है एक कैद खाने में रह गई मेरा शोहर यही है यकीन ये हम अपने लफ्ज़ों में मुंतकिल कर रहे हैं ऐन ही ये लफ्ज़ नहीं हैं लेकिन मफहूम यही कि ये जज्बात यही कह रहे हैं कि आखिर आदमी कैसे और किस तरीके से जा सकता है ये तो जनाब जैनब का सलीक़ा था कि इतनी उस गमजदा खातून को वहाँ से ले कर के आ गए मगर उस पर मिलता है कि जनाब रबाब ने उस वक्त ये बात कही थी और जनाब इमाम हुसैन के कब्र अकदस पर खड़े होकर के क्या मेरी इन आँखों ने आपके जनाजे को धूप में देखा है इसलिए मैं कभी साय में नहीं बैठूँगी सम हिस्टोरियंस राइट दैट वन इमाम हुसैन डाइड लेडी रबाब स्पेंट अयर इन ग्रीफ एट इमाम हुसैन ग्रेव मोर ओवर वन प्रपोज टू शी रिफ्यूज टू री मैरी She dedicated her remaining life to the grief of her family and she was not the only one who dedicated her life in remembrance of those who died in Karbala. Imam Zain al-Abidin and other ladies who survived Yazid's captivity never stopped mourning. This was the effect of Karbala. Those who survived even though they physically were present at different cities and homes their souls always remained 
back in Karbala. They always mourned the tragic day of Ashura and the oppression of Yazid and his forces. Ashura was not the end of Lady Rabab's test, though. She suffered more as the martyrdom of Imam Hussein traumatized her little daughter Sukaina in the days to come. Sukaina was the daughter of Imam Hussein and Lady Rubab. So, another side, we have Sayyidah Sukaina Salamullah or Sakina Salamullah. Both it's a cultural difference, pronunciation uh, according to culture. It's one name. It's Sukaina or Sakina Salamullah. It is important to mention here that people may get confused when they hear three different names. That is Rukaya, Sukaina, and Sakina. Rukaya and Sukaina are two different personalities, and both were present in Karbala. Their miseries and hardships are almost the same as both were undergoing a similar kind of ordeal. Both were thirsty, both were beloved to their father and uncle. According to one narration, Sukaina died when the looted caravan was stopped outside the wall of Damascus so that Yazid could decorate the whole city to celebrate his victory. Due to her thirst, starvation and the manhandling by Yazid's forces, she couldn't survive and died at the gate outside the city where they were asked to stop. Other narrations state that she returned to Medina and died there. Ruqayya, on the other hand, died in the prison of Yazid. In South Asia, scholars often mix the miseries of both ladies and suggest that Ruqayya and Sukaina are actually the same personality whom they call Sakina. So it is advisable to pay close attention to these two different ladies in this film. Lady Sukaina was a beautiful and delicate little girl. She was attached to almost everyone. Her attachment with her uncle Abbas is discussed in many books. Historians write that when Yazid ibn Mavia's forces deprived Imam Hussein's family from water, there was a panic in Imam Hussein's camp as the children were crying for water. So when Hazrat Abbas, who was the commander of Imam Hussein's army, saw Sukaina coming towards him with lots of children, who were requesting water, he stood up and walked towards Imam Hussein and asked for permission to go to the battlefield for the sake of Sukaina and to get water for all the children. Many historians recall this moment as the most difficult decision for Imam Hussein to take, to allow his brother to go out alone in front of Yazid's forces who were in the thousands. But when Imam Hussein looked at Sukaina and the other children, he allowed Hazrat Abbas to go and get some water for them. Upon seeing him leave, Lady Zainab told him that they would be vulnerable in his absence. कि अब जो आंखें तुम्हारे खौफ से जागा करती थी अब वो सोया करेंगी और जो आंखें तुम पर एतबार करके सो जाती थी अब वो जागा करेंगी इमाम हुसैन's decision to allow Hazrat Abbas to go towards the battlefield knowing that he wouldn't come back suggests a father is willing to lose anything for his daughter despite how precious it may be but Imam Hussein chose divine sacrifice over his family and over father-daughter relations. As a father of daughters, <laughs> sometimes um, I used to watch my, my younger sister, she would do a thing like this to my father and she said, I have him wrapped around my finger. With my daughters, I understand because daughters have us wrapped around their fingers. We love them. We want to protect them. We want to make them feel like they're the, the most beautiful princesses in the whole entire world. 
Imam Hussein, he dismounts from the horse. And Sukaina asks, can I, can you hold me one time? Can I lie with you one last time? And they're together and they're crying. And it, it, it's so emotional. You know you're not going to see your daughter anymore. The daughter realizes she's not going to see the father anymore. How do you, how, the mind is not able to grasp that whole situation. As a father, what do you do? We would, whatever we can do to protect our daughters, protect our families is what we'll do. But Imam Hussein had a mission and eventually Sukaina succumbed to that mission. Ashura was the day that challenged the limit of tolerance and patience and it went beyond the established boundary. It went beyond the capacity of normal human beings. The members of the Ahlul Bayt were exceptional, be it the 56-year-old Lady Zainab or the 4-year-old Sukaina. The level of patience is sometimes difficult to comprehend. When Hazrat Abbas was martyred and Imam Hussein carried his flag back to the camp, जब आए हैं तो देख रही हैं कि अलम तो आया है मगर मेरे बाबा लेके आए हैं चचा कहाँ हैं उस लम्हे भी जनाब शकीना ने बाबा से पूछा था कि मगर मेरे चचा कहाँ रह गए तो इमाम हुसैन ने एक जुमला कहा और ये कहा कि मगर तुम उनका क्यों इंतज़ार कर रहे हो तो उसके बाद का तारीख का जुमला कि जनाब शकीना ने उस चार उम्र चार साल की उम्र और वह एतबार कि आपने एक जुमला दोहराया कि अन्न हो व अदनी बिल माँ मेरे चचा ने मुझसे पानी का वादा किया मुझसे पानी का वादा किया यानी एतबार को बता रहा है कि मेरा चचा बेवफा नहीं है जो बात है उसका पूरा करने वाला है यकीनन जब मुझसे वादा करके गए हैं तो लेके आने वाले हैं वो ज़रूर लेके आएंगे ये वो लम्हा था कि मैं हुसैन साहब सलाम ने सब झुका लिए और आंखों में आंसू आए थे Then Sukaina had to witness another battle which started right after Imam Hussein's beheading. When Imam Hussein goes out to battle and the deed is done, Sukaina is destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. You would think that the whole ordeal was over for the family. But the ordeal for Sukaina had just begun. Because what happens to her in the next couple of hours after the death of her father and her uncles and her cousins and all that were with Imam Hussein, the men that were there, it becomes more of a nightmare for Sukaina. Yazid ibn Mawiyah, with his governor of Kufa and Basra, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, outlined a strategy that made sure that the ordeal of Imam Hussein's family would not end after the killing of the male members. Ibn Ziyad, he sends a letter to Umar Asad and he says, do not be satisfied with the fact that you have a victory. There should be more of a humiliation so the first humiliating thing that Sukaina has to go through is she has to witness as the horses are trampling over the bodies of the family of the Prophet. The next thing they do is as if there was some glory, some honor in taking advantage of women and children, they went through the camp of Imam Hussein with the women and the children and they begin to rob them. They begin to take the things that belong to them. And more importantly than that, they begin to snatch off the kimar, the, the hijab, off of their heads. Yazid's forces began attacking Imam Hussein's camp, harassing the women and children, robbing everything they found in their possession. But that wasn't enough for them. They set the tents on fire. And as the tents are set on fire, her dress also caught fire. Coolly, he saw the earrings that she was wearing. 
and to add insult to injury, he snatches the earrings out of her ears. This baby is running around. Clothes were burning. Ears are bleeding. When the camps were burnt down and Yazid's forces started celebrating, Sukaina found herself alone and helpless. She had heard stories about her grandfather, Imam Ali, who comes to rescue people, so she called out to him for help. The man said, why would you want to be pointed towards Najaf at this time of night? How are you going to get through the desert? Sukaina said, I want to go to Najaf so that I could complain to my grandfather, Ali ibn Abi Talib for what happened to my father, to my uncles, and to my cousins. On the evening of Ashura, the remaining members of Imam Hussein's caravan were taken into captivity and sent to Damascus in order to present them in front of Yazid. These captives were injured, thirsty and starving. They were chained and taken to Damascus. Sukaina was really young, but her intellect, patience and courage to bear this extreme pain was extraordinary. When Zainab nudges Sukaina to get up to get some water and to get something to eat, This baby is, where's Asghar? Where's my brother? Allow him to have water before I have water. Look at this baby. She's teaching us what it is to have akhlaq under the worst form of duress. She is going through an ordeal that many of us would never go through in our lifetime let alone in a few hours and a couple of days in the grand scheme of things as far as them being in Karbala. But the separation from her father was such a disturbing moment for her. It is said that when Imam Hussein reached Karbala, he instructed his sister Lady Zainab to take care of Sukaina and keep her away from him as she used to sleep on his chest. جناب سرکار سید الشہدا حضرت امام حسین صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی الگ سے ایک زیادہ ایک محبت ایک لگاؤ تھا جناب سکینہ سے یہ شہرت ہے کہ جناب سکینہ سے بے انتہا آپ کو محبت تھی حتیٰ کہ وہ آپ ہی کے پاس ہوتی تھیں یا آپ ہی کے پاس رہتی تھیں اور محبت کے الفاظ میں روایت میں یہ بھی آتا ہے کہ جب ان کو نیند نہیں آتی جب تک کہ آپ کے بابا کے سینے پہ سر نہیں رکھ لیتی تھی Imam Hussein knew that he would not survive the battle and that Sukaina would have to find a way to sleep without him. After the death of Imam Hussein, it did indeed become very difficult for Sukaina to sleep at night. She's uneasy, she can't sleep. This baby in the middle of the night. No flashlights like we have today, no light on the cell phone, nothing but her heart guiding her in the middle of the battlefield to her father. When Zainab checks the camp to see what's going on, she finds that Sukaina isn't there. She walks out and she's in the middle of the battlefield. How hard could this, should this be? How, was, how hard was it for Zainab to walk through to see her brother, to see her children, her own children, Aun and Muhammad, who were there just left there, no burial, no respect, no nothing. But she looks towards her niece, Sukaina. And where does she find them? Where does she find her? Lying on the chest of her father, whose head had been beheaded. Yazid's cruelty had no match. He chose the darkest cell from his dungeon, where one could not even see a ray of light. He knew about the attachment of Lady Zainab with Imam Hussein, so he brought the heads of the martyrs and put them in front of Lady Zainab and Imam Zain al-Abidin in order to humiliate them further. Yazid also knew about Sukaina's attachment to her father, so he decided to torment her further. We find that Sukaina was put in chains and was marched from town to town until they reached the palace of Yazid. Sukaina, someone who loved her father, 
had to sit and watch as Yazid is hit in the face in the head of Imam Hussein. What child needs to see that? And then they put her in a dungeon. She put a baby girl in a jail. What is this baby girl gonna do? She's able to come and destroy your army? She's able to incite the people at this point in time against you? You put her in jail. And she cries, and she cries, and she cries, and all you can do is complain about this crying. In essence, Sukaina was ahead of her age, and a lot can be learnt from her short life. There's so many lessons that we learned from Sukaina. The fact that she honored her imam, the fact that she was so willing to give to others when she didn't have to give for herself. The fact that she said, you go before me. The fact that she was so loving, so kind, so gentle at this young age, we don't have any excuse. And we should teach our children about Sukhaina and inshallah, maybe they can grow up to have the same type of spirit as this young princess of Ahlul Bayt. And she uh, martyred from second Safar to 13th between these old days. You know, you can, it's confusion. Fourth of Safar, uh, some of you will say 10th of Safar, some of 13th. But between 2 to 13th Safar, she died in prison. In regards to Lady Ruqayya, who was younger than Sukaina, there was not a single night when this young girl did not weep and call out for her father. Historians write that little Ruqayya used to weep all night and said to her brother Imam Zain al Abidin that she would not survive. So when Yazid had come to know about this, he sent the head of Imam Hussein to Ruqayya in the prison. There are differing accounts on this event. Few historians say that the head of Imam Hussein was covered with dust and blood and so it was not recognizable. So Ruqayya at first refused to accept that this was her father's head. Other accounts narrate that when she received the head, she screamed and then silenced herself. Historians write further that she put her head on Imam Hussein's head and slept, but that she never woke up. Looking at history, it suggests that there are two personalities and it could be supported through some evidences such as the shrine of Lady Ruqayya. But it doesn't mean the Masa'ib, which the South Asian scholars recite for Lady Sakina, are wrong or historically incorrect. The Masa'ib are historically and factually accurate, but sometimes they are confused and mixed, which results in the merger of two personalities into one. Sometimes it is difficult to decide what was more painful, to get killed on Ashura or become a captive with the haunting memories of Ashura. Looking at captives like Sukaina and Ruqayya, the latter seems more painful.